So may God bless you all this morning. Uh, I mean, now this is the time for the, uh, for the uh, message and we are uh, coming together in the presence of God uh, with uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, great expectation that the God is going to speak to us. I mean, we have been hearing uh, many things from the Psalms and also from the exhortation from uh, uh, all the people. And this time, as we are gathering together in the presence of God, the, the title uh, which I am going to speak from the word of God is the glorified son of man. The glorified son of man. Amen. So, uh, dear uh, Cedric is going to read uh, the Bible verses uh, uh, for today's message. And uh, uh, the, the topic is called uh, the glorified son of man. Uh, that is from Revelation chapter 1 verses 13 uh, to 16. Revelation chapter 1 verses 13 to 16. Uh, our dear brother, I mean, Cedric will read that, uh, I mean, uh, verses, then we will move on. Praise God. Revelation chapter 1, verse 13. And in the midst of the seven lamps, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment, down to the feet, and girded above the chest with a golden band. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. That was verse 14 also. Shall I go to 16, Pastor? Yeah, yeah, up to 16. His feet were like the fine brass, and if refined in a furnace, and his voice as a sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Satri. You know, uh, we already discussed many things uh, uh, from this portion in our Bible study on uh, one Friday. Uh, the title was uh, uh, like uh, the sevenfold descriptions of uh, our Lord Jesus Christ or the sevenfold descriptions of the Son of Man. I mean, and that was a, that was a, that was a kind of uh, a Bible class. And But this is the sermon or the message about the glorified Son of Man. I mean, and the reason... And then I said, uh, the glorified son of man, the glorified son of man is in, uh, in chapter 1, verse 13, Apostle John is saying uh, something, I mean, uh, like this, and you know, you know, says like this, I saw Jesus like a son of man. I saw Jesus like a son of man. Okay, so that is what John is saying in, uh, in John chapter 1, verse, sorry, Revelation chapter 1, verse 13. Okay, so that means, Jesus is called as a son of man. Jesus is called as a son of man. I mean, so that is related to his incarnation. That is related to his incarnation. And when he took uh, the, the form of human uh, being, he is called as the son of man. He is called as the son of man. I mean, that means in, 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 the, in the meaning of that, being as, as God, Jesus was born as a man of a human mother. Jesus was born as a man of a human mother, and he grew and lived as a man in this world. Amen. Hallelujah. So he walked as a man, and he was tortured and tempted in his humanity. So he got hungry, and he wept and slept and went through many agonies in his life when he was I mean, doing his public ministry in this, in, the, in this world. And even his death and his burial indicates his humanity. I mean, but I mean, here John is saying that even if Jesus is the son of man, in his vision, he is seeing him as a resurrected and glorified son of man. Hallelujah. So the description about Jesus in these verses clearly speaks about the excellency and glory and authority and power, I mean, which he received back after the resurrection. I mean, so, I mean, as we go through these verses, I mean, and listen to uh, this message about the glorified Christ, it's my prayer that, uh, that everyone, I mean, hallelujah, who is sitting and attending in this meeting may experience the glory of Jesus in our personal life. Hallelujah. You know, the reason that, I mean, Apostle John is revealing Jesus as the son of man in this particular, I mean, chapter is, you know, all the churches in Asia Minor and all over the world were going through the persecution, I mean, severe persecution. You know, in those days, the churches are going through the 
I mean, severe persecution. So to increase those people and to support those people and to help those people and to tell them that, I mean, there is nothing to worry about this persecution or something, but I mean, God's presence is there with you always and God will help you and God will strengthen you. Hallelujah. So in the midst of the problem, in the midst of the persecution, I mean, Apostle John is getting the vision about Jesus Christ, that Jesus is not at all a died Christ, I mean, but Jesus is a glorified Christ. And Jesus is a son of man. At the same time, he's the son of God. And he took the form of a man and he became a human being in order to understand, in order to make sure that, I mean, he is able to deliver, I mean, all the sinners from the sin. Hallelujah. So that's what we understand from this portion that I mean, Jesus Christ, I mean, it, it, it is here revealed as a son of man, but he's a glorified son of man after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So this morning, as we are gathering together and as we are li listening the word of God, I pray that I mean, this power and this authority and this, I mean, presence of God and glory of God will be imparted to every person, those who are, I mean, attending and listening the word of God this morning. So we won't be able to, I mean, go through all the, I mean, seven uh, descriptions of uh, Jesus in this portion, but uh, uh, we will try to speak on at least, I mean, four or five important points that, I mean, if the time permit this morning. I mean, so there are many things, I mean, uh, written about uh, the glorified Jesus Christ, the glorified son of man, but we will be looking into only, I mean, four or five points this morning. You know, the reason is, you know, Jesus Christ is glorified. Jesus is glorified. I mean, what is the benefit that we are getting from the glorified Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. I mean, when Jesus Christ is glorified, we are getting all the blessings from the glorified Christ. Hallelujah. You know, when Jesus was in, in this world, I mean, I mean, the, the, the people of God, the disciples of God, they were encouraging and they were, I mean, e encouraging each other that, I mean, Jesus Christ is with us bodily. I mean, physically, Jesus Christ is with us. And after the I mean, death and resurrection and the ascension of Jesus Christ, the, the disciples were, I mean, talking and the disciples were encouraging each other that saying that, okay, Jesus Christ is not a dead God, but Jesus Christ is the, I mean, risen God. Hallelujah. So after the resurrection of, of God, I mean, this morning, we have to experience the power and the glory of the glorified Jesus Christ in our personal life. Hallelujah. So we are moving into the first point that is the, the head and the hair of the glorified Jesus Christ. I mean, that is in verse 14. We will read that verse 14 first, then we will go on to the other verses and we will explain all those things. Hallelujah. So the head and hair of the glorified Christ from verse 14 of chapter 1. Revelations 1 14. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow. So what a, what a, what a great explanation is given about the head and hair of a glorified Jesus Christ. I mean, it is like the head and hair wear, like white, like wool, as white as snow. You know, Apostle John was one of the eyewitness of crucifixion of Jesus Christ. I mean, and he writes in John chapter, I mean, 19 verse 2, that, uh, I mean, uh, something about, uh, I mean, Jesus Christ, that in, in John chapter 19 verse 2, we'll read that verse. John 19 two. And the soldiers twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe. Amen. What is that? I mean, when I mean Jesus was doing his public ministry, you know, all of the people, those who were surrounded him, they were not, uh, I mean, liking him, and they were just, I mean, rejecting him. Some of them were rejecting him at the same time at the time of the crucifixion of jesus christ here i mean apostle john is writing in his gospel that the soldiers i mean twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head i mean that means they did it to make to to, to mock him i mean it was not to to glorify him but it was not it was to mock Jesus Christ. But now John is writing in the in the book of Revelation that he is seeing Jesus in a different way. Amen. In in on, on the on the crucifixion time or on the cross, 
he was saying that okay i'm seeing jesus here i mean as a, as a, the soldiers are twisting they 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 are I mean, crown together and thorns i mean with thorns and they are putting that crown on his head to mock jesus christ but when he is coming to the book of revelation when he is receiving i mean the the, the, the visions about uh, the son of man i mean glorified son of man he is saying that in a, in a different in a different way and he says that his head and hair i mean were were white like wool as white as snow hallelujah you know when you go through that verse we have to understand there are mainly i mean three i mean spiritual meanings that we are getting from this verse i mean why it is written that jesus i mean and and, and the vision of jesus that when john was receiving in a different way i mean john is writing in one way in john's gospel and the same person is writing about jesus christ in another way in the book of revelation there are mainly three meanings that uh, you can you can go through that portion you know firstly it talks about the ex, uh, i mean i mean eternal existence of jesus christ the eternal existence of jesus christ secondly i mean the divine purity and holiness of jesus christ the divine purity and holiness of jesus christ i mean thirdly we can see that i mean jesus christ is full of wisdom the full of wisdom in him there is a full of wisdom in him there are three i mean spiritual meanings that we are getting from the first point the first point is the head and hair of the glorified christ hallelujah and you know the the, the color white the, the white hair the white hair on uh, the head of jesus christ the glorified jesus christ usually i mean uh, usually when we see that the, the, the white haired people we say about uh, the aged people that, that person is an aged person right okay so that person is an aged person so uh, in, in in that we see but here the real i mean meaning is the ancientcy of a person the real meaning of this usage is the ancientcy of the person that means you know we need we read uh, uh, in 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 book of revelation it's of that i mean he was he is and he is to come he was he is and he is to come and he is the ancient of days i mean he is the ancient of days hallelujah and also which shows about the holiness of jesus christ the holiness of jesus christ you know in jesus in his public ministry was a perfect demonstration of the holiness and purity i mean so when whenever we 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 i mean approach him we need to have the same holiness in our life i mean without the holiness we cannot see god that is that's what we read in bible you know now without the holiness without the sanctification we cannot see the face of god when we worship god hallelujah and his wisdom is amazing his wisdom is amazing it is not jesus has the wisdom but bible says jesus is the wisdom hallelujah is not it is not written that jesus has the wisdom jesus has the wisdom rightly but at the same time jesus i mean jesus is the wisdom that is the right term that we can use i mean so so uh, just remember i mean one thing that his head and hair were like a wool and as a white as snow which shows jesus is the eternal god jesus is the eternal god there are many things to i mean explain all those things because uh, already i mean we discussed something from uh, this portion in the bible study meeting so i am leaving that one and understand one thing that you know, the the reason of uh, i mean the, the vision of jesus i mean uh, of uh, apostle john he written that i mean jesus is the eternal god and jesus is the holy and pure god and he is at the full of wisdom and let uh, i mean that is that is the meaning of that man so let us i mean come close closer unto the lord i mean who is the he is the holy god and let us come closer unto the lord who who is the wisdom and let us come closer unto the lord jesus christ who is the eternal god hallelujah so that's the meaning of the first point and second point is the eyes of the glory glorified christ the eyes of the glorified christ i mean that also in uh, verse uh, 14 itself no need to read that already we read it okay so the second point is the eyes of the glorified christ i mean it is written there his eyes were like a flame of fire right his eyes were like a flame of fire that means jesus is omniscient jesus is omniscient and jesus is all knowing god hallelujah so what is the speciality of the eyes of jesus christ i mean uh, john is saying that the eyes of jesus christ the eyes of the son of man is like a 
flame of fire, hallelujah, and eyes like flame of fire refers to the penetrating eyes, the penetrating eyes. I mean, we read in uh, 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 Psalms uh, 139, Psalms 139 verses 1 through 5, then 7 to 10. You read that verse, uh, I mean, one by one, then we will understand, I mean, what's the speciality of the eyes of the glorified Jesus. Hallelujah. What's the speciality of the eyes of the glorified Jesus? You read, uh, I mean, Psalm number 139, I mean, verses 1 to 5 first. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Verse number seven. Where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of, my, of the morning and dwell in the outermost part of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. Amen. Hallelujah. What is that? You know, these verses talks about, I mean, Jesus Christ has an eye and that eye is a penetrating eye. It's just like a flame of fire. It's just like a flame of fire. That means the presence of God, I mean, the, the eyes of God can see everything. Nothing is hidden in the sight of God. All things are open to the eyes of God. All things are open to the eyes of God. You know, Sam says that, okay, you will know everything when I sit down, when I rise up, amen, and when I go apart, and when I'm lying down, amen, and the, the, the words that I, I mean, speak, amen, amen, and also, I mean, in seventh verse, it says that, okay, I mean, uh, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? I mean, all these words say it's about the, 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 I mean, the eyes of Jesus Christ. That means the eyes of Jesus Christ can see everything, everything what is happening in this world. The same thing is, uh, uh, we can read in a Hebrew chapter, I mean, uh, third, uh, Hebrew, Hebrew chapter 4, verse 13. Hebrew chapter 4, verse 13 also we read that. Yeah. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Amen. All things are open to the eyes of God and we, we are supposed to give the account to God. That means we cannot hide anything from the eyes of Jesus Christ. We cannot hide anything from the eyes of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know, we may not be knowing many things, but God knows everything. God knows everything. For example, you know, if somebody is having cancer, the, the, the disease cancer, I mean, uh, the starting uh, time, uh, he may not be uh, knowing anything about cancer, that he is having the cancer or something. But after many days only, he will be knowing that, okay, I'm diagnosed with the, the cancer. But if that person, I mean, go uh, for, a, for a scanning or something, the scanning will be say that, okay, what is the situation and what is the problem with you? I mean, this is a cancer and this is the seriousness of this and all those things through the scanning only. You know, the, we have to remember one thing, you know, when we are scanned, I mean, by the, I mean, eyes of God, you know, when the other people are seeing you, I mean, they will say, okay, this person is a spiritual person and this person is a good person or something. But I mean, when G, the eyes of Jesus is scanning you and scanning our life, you know, Jesus will say, I mean, this is the problem. This is the problem that you are facing. Hallelujah. And this is the sickness that you are having. And this is the, I mean, struggle that you are going through. I mean, even when you read a, a chapter, a Revelation chapter two, I mean, uh, and three, we understand that you know i mean apostle john is writing something about the condition of the churches the condition of the churches and in that the jesus christ is saying that this is the problem when i'm i'm, I'm seeing with my eyes i mean when i'm i'm scanning with my eyes i mean this is your situation this is your condition and you have to come back 
you have to come back. I mean, you have to return back to God and you have to, I mean, make that assurance that God's presence is with you. Hallelujah. So this is what we understand. Remember, just the look of Jesus can, I mean, pierce into the body and the soul and the spirit and will bring the healing for the people of God. <clears throat> Amen. So remember, there is a healing and deliverance through the look of Jesus Christ. There is a healing and deliverance through the I mean, look of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, I mean, I mean, sometimes you know, your friends or relatives uh, may not be knowing, I mean, what is your problem? You are going through a struggle, but uh, your friends or your family members or relatives, they may not be knowing what is your problem, what is your struggle. I mean, but Jesus knows everything, but Jesus knows everything. And he is not only seeing our problem, but bringing the solution for the problem. So remember, his eyes are like the flame of fire. Hallelujah. So this morning, let me encourage every person who is listening this word of God. Hallelujah. The eyes of glorified son of God. I mean, Jesus Christ is like a flame of fire. Hallelujah. It can enter anywhere. Hallelujah. It can scan any person and it can understand what is the situation of the people. Hallelujah. And there is a God there is an eye of God. I mean, it can heal you completely. Hallelujah. This morning, what all the situation that you're going through. Hallelujah. Let us bring all the problems in the mighty hand of God. And God is there to I mean, protect you. God is there, or God is there to provide your I mean, needs in your life. Hallelujah. So this morning, let us all commit ourselves with the mighty hand of God. We have a God I mean, who knows everything and he sees everything and he is able to deliver you and he is able to I mean, look into your problem and he is able to see what is what is your situation and God is saying that again whenever I see your problem I'm there to help you I'm there to support you hallelujah so let us experience the, the, the presence of the eyes of Jesus Christ this morning in our personal life hallelujah we will go to the third I mean third point I mean that is the, the feet of the glorified Jesus Christ that is in verse 15 we will read I mean verse 15 that is the feet of glorified Jesus Christ. His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Amen. What is that? I mean, his feet were like a burnished brass. It was like a burnished brass, as if refined in a furnace. As if refined in a furnace. You know, his feet was like the gleam of the polished bronze. And feet under furnace shows the feet of Jesus, which he has gone through many struggles. Hallelujah. You know, you know the, the feet of Jesus Christ was gone through many hardship, many struggles. While he was, I mean, taking the form of a man and coming to this earth and living in this world, I mean, he was going through many hardship. And he had to go through the pain. You know, the way to the cross of Calvary also was a painful way. I mean, the, the, the way to the I mean, I mean, cross of Calvary, it was not an easy thing, but it was a painful thing. Hallelujah. Carrying the cross and walking from one place to another place. I mean, I mean, and, and getting the beating and everything and getting all the, going through the agonies and everything. So we have to understand that, hallelujah, when you walk through, I mean, the fire, I mean, you know, I know we have to understand one thing that the way, I mean, always Jesus went through is a painful way. That's the reason, that's the reason now Jesus can say one thing this morning to us that, I mean, whenever you, you, you are going through the troubles, whenever we, you are walking through the fire, nothing to be worried because, I mean, that Jesus presence is always with you. Hallelujah. We will read Isaiah chapter, I mean, 43, verse 2. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. When you pass through the water, I yes. will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flames scorch you. What a great and I mean, marvelous verse it is, you know. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be I mean, scorched, nor will the flame burn you hallelujah you know the situations of this world i mean sometimes you know i mean they are giving the painful situation in their life but at the same time i mean jesus who already overcame and jesus who already went through the hardship and the problems and the pain 
Hallelujah. He is, I mean, giving the promise that, I mean, I mean, when you go through the fire, do not be buried. The blazing fire will not harm you. The blazing fire will not burn you. Praise God. Hallelujah. So this morning, let us thank God for the promise of God that the Even in Daniel, I mean, I mean, chapter, I mean, three, when we read Daniel chapter three, that we see that the, the incident that is happening there. You know, Sandrak, Meshach, and Abednego were tied up and cast them into the, I mean, furnace of the blazing fire. Hallelujah. So we are thinking about that, that situation, you know, that, that incident in which, I mean, Sandrak, Meshach, and Abednego, they were tied up, okay, and they were cast into the fire and it was it was it is called as a i mean i mean furnace of the blazing fire and it was increased to seven four you know it, they into into the furnace of the blazing fire but in in what is, what is happening whenever i mean even though those people were going through the fiery situation what is happening there you know in uh, 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 chapter 3 verses 24 and 25 the king is asking a question you read that verses I mean, then two. king nebuchadnezzar was astonished and he rose in haste and spoke saying to his counselor did we not cast three men bound into the midst of fire they answered and said to the king true o king look he answered i see four men loose walking in the midst of fire and they are not hurt and the form of the fourth is like the son of god Praise God. Hallelujah. Listen very carefully. King Nebuchadnezzar, I mean, he is asking a question. Was it not three men we cast bound into the midst of the fire? But I see four men in the midst of the fire. Hallelujah. And without harm. And the fourth one is like a son of God. The fourth one is like a son of God. Hallelujah. He was the son of man when he inquired. Jesus, when he incarnated, and now, I mean, he's saying that, okay, after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he is the son of God, and he is having the authority, and he is there, always present in the midst of the struggles of the people of God. Hallelujah. And this is what we understand. Nebuchadnezzar is asking that, was it the three men that put, we put in the fire? But I see four men. Uh, they are jumping and dancing, I mean, inside the furnace of the, I mean, uh, uh, the, the fiery, I mean, furnace. I mean, so that, that talks about the pre-incarnate Christ. The pre-incarnate Christ. Hallelujah. So remember one thing. Nothing happens to the feet of Jesus because that is like a burnished brass or refined in a furnace. I mean, nothing happened to Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because the presence of God was with them. Hallelujah. Amen. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were going through the, I mean, fire, I mean, nothing could do there. Hallelujah. And they were jumping and dancing, God. Nothing happened to those people because the presence of God, I mean, was with them. Hallelujah. The presence of God means the presence of God who became the, I mean, who, who incarnated and who, who became the son of man. And after the resurrection, who he became the son of God. And he is saying that, okay, I will be there with you always whenever you are going through the I mean, troublesome situation. Hallelujah. So let us always, I mean, I mean, cling up on the promises of God that that I mean always it is with us hallelujah so remember his feet is like a burnished brass as it refined in a furnace hallelujah how many of you can I mean experience that presence of God in our in our in our fiery situation in our I mean hardship and in our painful situation this morning hallelujah I request everyone to I mean look unto the Lord in prayer and ask to the Lord oh Lord I need that presence of God hallelujah thank you master hallelujah the presence of God I mean I mean always with the I mean I'm a shattered nation and a bit ago hallelujah that the same presence is with us this morning also I I mean, there is a God and he is promising us that, okay, I have gone through all the difficult situations of this world. Hallelujah. Jesus says that I have gone through all the difficult situations of this world. And I went to the death and I went to the, I mean, I mean, uh, to the, to the, I mean, I mean, Tom, but I mean, God's presence is there and I am overcoming everything and I'm standing with you always. Hallelujah. So this morning, let us trust in the promises of God and praise God for all his benefits and everything. Hallelujah. We will go to the fourth I mean, point that is the face of the glorified Jesus Christ. The face of the glorified Jesus Christ 
from verse 16 from verse 16 he had in his right hand seven stars out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenances was like the sun shining in its strength and I'll, I'll go through i mean maybe a little more spiritually you know i know his face was like the sun shining in the strength hallelujah it's not a, not only just listening the word of god or listening the message but try to i mean apply in your life and try to take that message in your personal life and let us experience the power and the authority of god in our personal life in our family life in our church life hallelujah so here we can see that the face of the glorified jesus christ is like a sun shining in its strength the sun shining in its strength hallelujah you know jesus uh, i mean he said in uh, i mean john chapter 8 verse 12 we'll read that verse i mean john then jesus then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. I mean, Jesus said, I am the light of this world. I am the light of this world. You know, only through Jesus, the light can come into the world. Only through Jesus, light can come into the world. So Jesus is the central figure of the church of the world. Hallelujah. I mean, the, the Jesus is the center figure of the church and also of the world. Hallelujah. Now, when a person is accepting Jesus as his personal savior, I mean, he will not live in darkness, but he will be living in light. I mean, even though he was in the darkness, I mean, when he is accepting Jesus as his personal savior, he is receiving that glory in him. And he is saying that, okay, and now I'm not walking in the darkness. I mean, I mean, nothing is clear for me and I'm walking in the light of Jesus Christ because Jesus himself said, I am the light of this world and you are also the light of this world and you are also the salt of this world. Hallelujah. So when we go through the darkest situation of our life, Hallelujah. Remember one thing, the presence of Jesus will show the light into it. Hallelujah. That's the reason, you know, when you read uh, Revelation chapter 1 verse uh, uh, 13, Revelation chapter 1 verse 13, uh, also we read that verse. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet and gridded above the chest with a golden band. Praise God. We see Jesus standing in the middle of the seven lampstands, right? Jesus is standing in the middle of the seven lampstands. That means Jesus is always presented in the midst of the people of God. Hallelujah. Jesus is always presented in the midst of the people of God. That's the reason that we read in Bible that, I mean, I mean whenever I mean, two or three gather in my name, I will be in the midst of them. Hallelujah. That's the reason, you know, Always, Jesus is presented in the midst of the people of God. It is not in, a, in one side or other side, but always he is there in the midst of the people of God. And that means he is the center figure of the church. He is the center figure of the church. You know, in Old Testament, when you when you go to I mean Exodus chapter twenty five, we are not re reading that verse, but let me let me go on. You know, when you read uh, I mean uh, the full chapter, uh, especially Exodus chapter twenty five verses thirty one following. You know, we see a lampstand inside the temple to give light for the people. Okay, there is a there is a there is a there is a lampstand. I mean, I mean, kept inside the temple to give the light for the people, the, the other people, and and there are other six branches for this lampstand. So the branches are always receiving the light from the main lampstand, which is in the middle. Which is in the middle. So th this is a this is the when shadow uh, in the in the Old Testament, and we are coming to the reality. Hallelujah! You know, when, whenever we read something from the Old Testament, there is a spiritual meaning in the New Testament. We have to understand that. Okay. So here we can see that there is a lampstand in the temple, and that lampstand is always giving the light for the people, and also there are six branches for this lampstand, and these branches are always receiving the light from the lampstand. And also, I mean, always this, all six branches are connected with the middle, I mean, lampstand. Hallelujah. So it is connected with. And when the church is, remember one thing, when the church is closely connected to the main lampstand, Jesus, the church will shine like anything in this world. Hallelujah. You know, if you want that, okay, our church is I mean, shining like anything, 
I mean, always be connected to the, I mean, lampstand, which is in the middle of the church. Hallelujah. I mean, we are supposed to be connected with that great light, Jesus Christ. Whenever we are connected with closely to that light, I mean, we are also getting the light and we also will be shining like anything. Hallelujah. And we will go to the next fifth point. Fifth point uh, is uh, the voice of glorious Jesus Christ. The voice of glorified Jesus Christ. I mean, that is in verse 15. Verse 15, we read. And his voice as a sound of many waters. Amen. So that, that's great. You know, it says that, I mean, his voice is like a sound of many waters. His voice is like a sound of many waters. It speaks about the authority and the power and the royalty of Jesus Christ. The authority and the power and the royalty of Jesus Christ. It speaks about the voice of Jesus Christ or the word of Jesus Christ or the command of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So the, the, the sound or the voice coming from his, heart, uh, from his mouth is just like a sound of many waters. Okay, many waters. You have seen uh, the, the, the waterfalls and everything. You know, if you go there, I mean, uh, you if, if you speak, okay, uh, somebody is, I mean, standing, I mean, just, uh, I mean, near to you, and if you um, speak something, he cannot hear that because of the sound of the waterfalls. Okay, so it, it, this is um, like a sound of many waters. It speaks about the, the, the power and the authority and the royalty of Jesus Christ. You know, the first voice John heard in, in chapter 1 verse 10, it was like a sound of trumpet. It was like a sound of trumpet. It was in chapter 1 verse 10. But the second time, he is, I mean, listening the voice of Jesus Christ like a sound of many waters, sound of many waters. Hallelujah. So we have to understand what is the speciality and what is the authority and what is the power and what is the royalty of the voice of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. To, to understand that, we will go to Psalm number 29. Psalm number 29, verses 4 through 9. I mean, very clearly, Setek is reading that and listen very carefully, I mean, what it is written in chapter, I mean, uh, uh, Psalm number 29, verses 4 to 9. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. And yes, the Lord splinters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes them also skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness like Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and, stripe, and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, everyone says glory. Praise God. Hallelujah. We don't have uh, enough time to explain all those things, but we have read it and uh, you will get it. I mean, if you are getting time in the, in, in the coming days, we'll be explaining all those things later. Okay, but I mean, listen one thing, you know, here we can read about the speciality and the power and the authority of the voice of God, the authority of the voice of God. Hallelujah. So we have to understand one thing, one more I mean, verse we will read and we will go on. John chapter 5, verses 25 through 29. John chapter 5, verses 25 through 29. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has his life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself, and has given him the authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this. For the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemn condemnation. Praise God. Hallelujah. Do not be I mean, amazed or marvelous about when we say that Jesus is the son of man. But one thing is there, you will, you are going to see that the, the voice of Jesus Christ and the voice of the Son of Man will reach to the tombs and the graves one day. Hallelujah. There is a day which is going to happen that. I mean, so it has a power. The voice of God, the word of God, the, 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 the sound of God and the, and the command of God has a power and the authority. 
you know when we read genesis chapter 1 i mean we see that the demonstration of the voice of god in various dimensions in that chapter hallelujah maybe in the in the creation it is there in the formation it is there and the reformation it is there and in the recreation every word every word i mean every word many things are happening many things take place i mean in different way because of the voice of god because of the voice of god hallelujah so in in in, in creation we understand the voice of god is there you know when god speaks something something will happen there when god speaks something something is going to happen there i mean genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says in the beginning god created heavens and the earth hallelujah in the beginning god created heavens and the earth you know somebody said like this it is it is the father god who created the heavens and the earth and jesus was not there when god created heavens and the earth Some some people say like that, you know. It is the Father God who created heavens and the earth. I mean, there was no Jesus when God was creating heavens and the earth. But when what we read in the, I mean, John chapter one verses one to three, it is a different verse, you know. In 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 chapter, I mean, John chapter one verses one to three clearly says, "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning." He was with God in the beginning. In the beginning, so what is what is Genesis chapter one verse one? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Here it says that, I mean, I mean, He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made. Through Him, all things were made. Without Him or without Jesus, nothing was made that has been made. Amen. Hallelujah. So that that's the reason I can say that. I mean, Jesus made everything. So Jesus is there in in the Triune God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. When I mean God was creating in the beginning the heavens and the earth, Jesus was there. Even in John chapter one verse fourteen, that only only one more verse we read. Uh, John chapter one verse fourteen. Yeah. John one fourteen fourteen. John one fourteen, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth so what if what happened there and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we behind beheld his glory the glory as the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth you know these verses declares the presence of jesus to the I mean, dateless past when God brought the universe into existence of nothing. Okay, there was nothing, but when God was creating everything, I mean, Jesus was there. That means Jesus, with His word, the voice, He created heavens and earth out of nothing. Hallelujah! He created everything in the universe without out of nothing. So Jesus created not only the heavens and the earth. But with his word and command, I mean everything in this universe were created. Hallelujah! So this morning I pray that I mean let his voice and let his command, let his word and let his I mean command create something out of nothing in our life. Hallelujah! And let the impossible things I mean become possible in the name of Jesus this morning. Hallelujah! Praise God! I mean whenever we go through the I mean Bible verses, let us I mean the. God may help us, every one of us, to I mean, I mean, take that in our personal life and apply that in our personal life. Hallelujah! So in creation, Jesus was there. I mean, the voice of Jesus was proclaiming, and everything were created. And secondly, in formation also, in formation also, Jesus, we can see. I mean, the, when 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 God or when Jesus spoke, and the formation takes place. Hallelujah! And also in reformation. When I mean God was I mean reforming something, reforming something. God was speaking the word, and I mean everything was reformed. And also in recreation, in re recreation also, when God is doing something, when God is speaking something, I mean everything were recreated. Hallelujah! So remember the voice of God. I mean the voice of the glorified Jesus Christ is like the sound of many 
what is and it has the power and the authority to make the impossible to possible and his voice and the word is like a sound of many waters hallelujah the changes are happening the transformation is happening i mean there are many things which is created i mean out of nothing hallelujah the, the recreation is happening the reformation is happening hallelujah everything is possible with the voice of jesus christ hallelujah so i pray that uh, i mean this morning that is for that is who is make some changes in our Christian life? Hallelujah. Shall we all look at the Lord in prayer this morning and look at the Lord in prayer and, and remember that I mean God's I mean vision that Apostle John was receiving from the Lord and he was saying that again, okay, I mean the persecuted church, the, the problem, the, the, the struggling, I mean struggling church. I mean, do not be worried about anything because I have the vision about Jesus Christ. That he is the glorified Son of Man. His head and his hair and his eyes are important, and his feet is important, and his face is important and his voice is more than i mean enough to to create many things in our christian life hallelujah so let us all i mean submit ourselves with the mighty hand of god all the things that we are struggling hallelujah the problem that we are struggling we are going through hallelujah let us bring everything in the mighty hand of god God's presence is there. God's presence is there. God is going to do the miracles in our life. Hallelujah. God is going to do the miracles in our personal life, in our church life, in our society. I mean, God is, 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 is sovereign God. Hallelujah. In his sovereignty. Hallelujah. God is doing many things in our life also this morning. Hallelujah. Let us all, I mean, give ourselves in the mighty hand of God. Let's take that word as a, as a personal experience in our Christian life. And let us sit in the presence of God with a word of prayer and uh, request that uh, Sister Divya to lead us in prayer now uh, for the, I mean, uh, just meditating the word of God and uh, Sister Divya is going to pray now.